In this presentation, we will enter data into the payroll register for the first month of the payroll, which will be August for us. So we're for more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. And say this is the first month that we have payroll in this company. We're going to have the four uh, employees. We're going to be running this from August till the end of the year just entering the first month of the operations into the payroll register here. We're going to be operating on a monthly basis. So our payroll process is going to be run monthly. So we're going to have this as of the month ended for August and calculate the payroll and related withholdings. And it's what we're going to calculate within the payroll register. When we consider that, we're going to have to first calculate what the earnings are. And then we're going to have to calculate the deductions on those earnings. Then we'll get to the uh, net pay. And then we'll talk about the employer taxes uh, portion of this as well. So we can see this. None of these calculations are very complex in and of themselves, but we have a lot of calculations here. To do this, we will have to maneuver a bit uh, around the worksheet. So note that we'll, we can do that with the scroll bar down here, uh, or we can use the arrows in order to maneuver through the worksheet. So we're going to start entering this data. Now, some of this data we're just going to give to you as part of the problem within the presentation here. So we're just going to give some of the data that will be given and we'll perform the calculations that need to be performed. We'll try to tell you where this information would be coming from in practice as we go. So first, we're going to uh, enter data for Anthony Moore and we're going to go through this. This first information is going to have to do with the filing status and the allowances. That usually comes from the Form W-4. So if we go to the Form W-4, we typically will have the name. So when we first enter information into our system, wherever we enter the system information in, typically it would come from the W-4 where we would have the formal name, marital status, and the number of allowances. So that's what we'll have here and the social security number. So we're going to enter that data here. We're going to say that Anthony is married. We're going to say have an M in B5. Note we're in essence going to be entering information where there's blue areas. So and there's going to be an M in B5 tab. We're going to say the number of allowances from the W4 is four. So four allowances from the W4. Then we're going to have the regular pay hours. This is going to be the number of hours. We would need to calculate this somehow in practice. Maybe we have a time clock calculating it uh, where someone has to punch in and out of the time clock and track the hours in some format. We're doing this on a monthly basis note here. So we're going to say that anytime we have uh, an hourly employee, we'll enter the number of hours here. If it's a salary employee, we'll just say it's a salary employee here. So we're going to say this is an hourly employee and we're going to put 161 hours for the month. Now note, these are just regular hours, not overtime hours. And when we break those out between regular hours and overtime hours, what we're going to have to do is, uh, is figure out what our overtime uh, regulations are. Is overtime meaning after a 40 hour work week or is overtime going to be something more stringent, meaning federal overtime typically is a 40 hour work week, which means we'd have to, even though we're paying monthly, look at each week within the month and see if there's any overtime hours and then pull those out uh, and, and calculate those. So I'm not going to, we're not going to do that here. We're just going to tell you what the overtime hours are based on that information. So just note if it's a 40 hour week, that's what we would end up doing. We'd have to calculate the hours for each week. Anything over 40 would then be overtime hours as we then calculate everything for the month, the time period that we're using in order to put the information into the earnings records. If on the other hand, you're in a state that has more stringent rules, such as an eight hour workday, anything over eight hours would be overtime. And we'd have to calculate uh, the days as well to see if there's any days over, over the eight hours and that could come out to a different calculation for overtime. So this is gonna be the regular hours. Then we're gonna give you the regular rate. This would be the rate that we agree upon within our, our payment agreement. It's gonna be 25 here. Then we're gonna calculate the regular pay, which of course, now that we have the uh, hours of 161 and the rate times the rate of 25, that would give us 4,025. We will do that with a formula here. So we are in F5, where we will say equals Point to the 161 hours, which is in D5 times 
the $25 in E5. We want to use formulas as much as possible. I'm going to select a tab and there's going to give us our 4,025. We're going to try to put dollar signs wherever we're talking dollars, non-dollar signs uh, when we don't, when we're not talking dollars to give an indication of when uh, we're talking about uh, some other type of measurement other than in dollars. So then we're going to go to the overtime hours. And again, we're just going to give the overtime hours. So based on our calculations, we're saying that the overtime hours is one. That means total hours was 161 plus one or 162. Then we're gonna give the overtime rate. Overtime rate is typically calculated as time and a half, meaning you can kind of think of it as a 50% as a raise, meaning if you had $25 an hour times 0.5, another half, $12, 0.5 plus the original 25, that would be 37.5, or we calculate that as 25 times time and a half or 100% 1.5 another 50% if we move the decimal two places to the right 150% so that gives us the 37.5 so our overtime rate we'll put in h5 we're going to do that with a formula equals the 25 times 1.5 and tab then we're going to give our overtime pay, which will just be the 1 times 37.5. So in I5, we will say equals point to the 1 in G5 times 37.5 in H5 and enter. That'll give us the 37.5. Now, obviously, we, are, we could have calculated that and just typed in 37.5 here, but we really want a formula. We want to standardize the worksheet. We want to have it all uniform and use formulas as much as possible, meaning this whole column should be symmetrical and have the same formula in it. Then the total earnings, we're gonna add up the regular pay and the overtime pay. So that's just gonna be the 4,025 plus the 37.5. We will do that with a formula again. So in J5 equals this 47.25 in F5 plus this 37.5 in I5. That gives us our 4,062. This is our total earnings. Now going from there, I'm gonna to scroll to the right a bit. What we're gonna do is, is just use these earnings to complete the rest of the worksheet. Now, what we're gonna do here is have a few more earnings columns, not calculating the tax. This isn't calculating um, the OASDI or the Social Security, the FUTA, Federal Unemployment Tax and the SUTA, state unemployment, these are gonna be wages that we'll use to calculate. They will be much the same in the first month of operations until we hit some of these caps. So the reason we need the second calculation of wages is because uh, if, for example, the earnings for an individual goes over the cap of 128,400, which we'd have to check on their individual earnings records to see if it does, then uh, these two numbers will differ. Otherwise, they'll be the same. Also note that these uh, Social Security wages could change for FICA taxes, including Medicare and uh, Social Security, to the total earnings if there's uh, pre-tax deductions, which could include a group insurance plan if that group insurance plan was uh, qualified as a cafeteria plan or a Section 125 plan. For the purposes of this example problem, the group insurance that we will have here is going to be a post-tax deduction, not going to be a pre-tax uh, deduction for our wages. It's going to come out of the calculation for net income, but it's not going to be uh, reducing the taxable income for federal income tax, Social Security, or Medicare. So that'll be the same for most employees throughout the entire time. But the FUTA has a cap of 7,000. So after they hit 7,000, then we don't calculate FUTA anymore. So we need to, so these numbers will change, not this pay period, but next pay period. SUTA is a state tax. We don't usually use SUTA. We're not, you know, focusing on the state, I should say. But SUTA is so closely related to FUTA, the way the terminology of the law is, that we're going to use it here. We're going to have a slightly different cap, 8,000. Uh, the, the cap oftentimes will simulate the FUTA cap or be somewhat similar in nature in terms of the calculation. So we're going to say that there's an 8,000 uh, SUTA cap. So for now, these will all be the same. So in K5, we're just going to say this equals the 4,6250. No change because the total earnings, they haven't hit the cap. 
This is still under 7,000 and it's the first payroll period. So it's, uh, so it's gonna be the same here as well. So L5 is just gonna be equals the 4,060, Same for the SUTA, there's no change here. So this just equals the 4,060, Now we'll calculate the OASDI, which is social security. It's part of the uh, FICA tax. Uh, so remember there's gonna be two components. OASDI is, is an easy abbreviation for it. So that's often used on the abbreviation, probably most commonly called uh, social security in terminology so in order to do that we want to make sure that we pick up the social security wages not the earnings here even though it's the same now but it won't be or possibly won't if any of the employees um reach the cap amount so we want to make sure to pick that up so we don't cause ourselves problems in the future so it's going to be the one uh let's see it's going to be the 4,062.50 times 0.062 which is 6.2%, so 0.062 if we move the decimal point over. So that's gonna be our calculation here. We'll do that with a formula in cell N5. So within N5, we're gonna say equals. Make sure we pick up the K5. It'll be the same as we picking up here, but again, we wanna make sure that we're in conformity, don't cause us problems in the future, times 0.062. Now we'll calculate HI, which, which is Medicare. So again, this is off, uh, an easy abbreviation. Sometimes it'll be MED or HI. So it's part of a FICA tax. We're gonna pick up the total earnings here because there's no cap on uh, Medicare. So there is uh, an added tax if it's above 200, but we're not gonna deal with that here, 200,000. So we're just gonna take the total earnings since there is no cap. So we're gonna take the 4062.5 times 0.0145. 1.45%, 0.0145. That gives us the 5890. Uh, notice that uh, it, it won't be perfectly rounded. That's just you know how, what we have to deal with. We want to round it to the nearest penny, so 58.91. When we calculate in Excel, of course, it will uh, look like it's rounded to the nearest penny, but it's actually taking it out. Uh, when we do calculations with it, it'll be taking the actual number. So we're going to in 05 equals, we're going to pick up the total earnings this time, times 0 0.0145. And that'll give us the 5891. So here's what I mean by, by Excel picking up the total number. If I go to the home tab numbers and increase the decimals, it's really uh, 58.906 on and on. But we're just going to pick up the 958.91. If we use this cell to calculate, it's really using the actual number, not the rounded number we see. Now we're going to do the federal income tax. Now this is the most complex of the taxes because it's not a flat tax as these two pretty much are. So we have to basically use tables and we need to know the marital status. We need to know the number of uh, allowances and we need to know how often the payroll is, which is ours is monthly. So I'm going to scroll back over. We need the, in this case, this is where the marital status comes into play, the number of allowances and uh, the earnings are what we're going to use. But we're going to go to the circular E to do this. So it'll be a simplified calculation. We'll go to the circular E. We have to look these up in the tables. So we're, we're looking up withholding. So I'm going to start by going down to page 21. And then I'm just going to scroll down just using the page down until we get to the table calculations here. And so there are going to be two types of tables. One's going to be the percentage method. That's the more complex table. Uh, we want to use, if possible, the um, just the table method. So we're going to be down here. Now, when we look at the tables, we have to see that we get them the right pay period. This is a weekly pay period or monthly. So we're going to scroll down until we get to the monthly pay periods. That's weekly. Then we got weekly. Then we got weekly. We've got bi-weekly. We've got bi-weekly, we've got bi-weekly, bi-weekly, and semi-monthly, semi-monthly, and semi-monthly. And finally, we should finally have monthly down here. We're jumping back over here to the payroll register. Note that we're going to be using these numbers in order to look up uh, this information for the total earnings, which isn't entirely correct. It'll be a good example here, but... Uh, just note that as we look this up, that it should be the total earnings, which is the 4062.5 minus the, the uh, 401k, if the 401k is going to be a non-tax 
item, a pre-tax item, which it typically is. So minus the 203.13, and that's the number we should uh, be looking up. So in our example, we're gonna be looking up these numbers so we get an idea of the table. We're gonna run with those numbers because uh, for the FIT, because that's how uh, the problem is set up. But just note that typically we would reduce it by the 401k. Also note that the group insurance, if it was a cafeteria plan, would then uh, be deductible here as well as with the OASDI wages and for Medicare. But we're going to say that this is not a cafeteria plan for this example, meaning it's not going to be a pre-tax deduction, but a post-tax deduction. And note what the result would be if we uh, basically over withheld. If we do it this way, we're going to take this number instead of the lower number, which would have been the total withholdings minus the 401k plan, which will result in us withholding more than we otherwise would, which would typically result when uh, the employees do their, their um, 1040 at the end of the year with the withholdings being too high and possibly having more of a refund at the end of the year. So typically this kind of will wash itself out in a way in that the withholdings will be too high during the year and then at the end of the year the um, refund after filling out the individual tax return the 1040 would typically be higher if, if, if an employee had the refund at the end of the year or else the tax owed would be lower now this is monthly this is single monthly single we're looking for monthly married so i'm going to scroll down until we get to a monthly married table and so here's monthly married so here's our table now we're gonna have four allowances so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna look at our total earnings which is this 4,062.50 I know I'm scrolling back and forth here but we're looking for this 4,062.50 going back to our tables if we go back to our tables we're, it's it's gonna give us a range so we want to be in this column that's the number we're gonna pick up and we're picking up a range of 4,062 so it's gotta be between these two numbers. So if I scroll down all the way down, we start picking up uh, 4,000. So here we are 4,030 to 4,070. So 4,062 is in between there. So I'm gonna scroll over to four allowances and that will give us this number of the 173. So that's what we'll use. That's how we're gonna use these tables. So we got to make sure in order to use the tables, we just need to make sure that we're picking up the right table in terms of monthly, picking up the right table in terms of marital status, and then we got to pick up the, the right column number and, and uh, the uh, wages within the wage range. So then if we go back to our table, we're going to go back to our cell over here and we have to manually input this uh, 173, was it? 173, I believe. Okay, so those are the taxes we're going to deal with. And we're not going to deal with uh, state income taxes. They could differ. Some states won't have taxes. Some states will have different taxes in terms of SIT. It might follow the federal income tax. We're then going to go to insurance as a voluntary type of deduction. And I'm just going to give the insurance number so that we can see what it is. Notice these are mandatory. They're going to come out of the paycheck. The insurance is going to be something that... Um, is voluntary we're going to be participating in the insurance but it's still going to come out of our wages also note that the insurance for the purposes of this problem will not be a section 125 cafeteria plan not be qualified for a section 125 cafeteria plan which means it'll be a post-tax deduction and not a pre-tax deduction so that means that it's not going to be reducing total earnings when we calculate the federal income tax and the uh, social security and medicare taxes so it's going to be uh, taken out of the paycheck post-tax calculation. So the insurance, I'm just going to say that it is going to be uh, for 1416.6 points. So I'm going to undo that. <laughs> it's going to be here. It's going to be 1416.67 for insurance. Union dues, we're going to say that there's two employees that have union dues. And that's, again, something that we're just going to have to pull out of the paycheck and I'm going to give the number here in our number. So whatever the union dues are, I'm going to say they're $8. And then the 401k plan or some type of retirement plan, this is going to be the amount that's going to be withheld from the wages to get to the net pay to put into a retirement plan, such as a 401k plan. And I'm just going to give the number here. This will vary based on what uh, the, the plan 
is, and based on what the employee decides to withhold within the plan, it is voluntary. So we're going to have 203.13 for this employee. And then we'll calculate the net pay. So this is going to be the actual paycheck. So what we have here is our total earnings here. We'll pick up this one. These are the same, but just this number. And then everything that we took out. OA, SDI, HI, Medicare, Social Security, Federal Income Tax, FIT, Group Insurance, Union, and the Retirement Plan 401k. So let's do that. And we're going to say that we have 4062.5 minus the OASDI 251.88 minus the 58.91 Medicare HI minus the FIT Federal Income Tax 173 minus Group Insurance 1416.67 minus Union Dues $8 minus the 401k 203.13 that gives us the 1950.91. Now there's a couple ways we can do that with a formula here. We're going to do a formula. We could uh, say that this is going to be equal to this number minus the sum of these. That's what we'll do next time. Right now, we're just going to point and click to each of them. So we'll just say this equals the total earnings in J5 minus, and I'm just going to say the OASDI in N5 minus the HI in O5 minus the FIT, Federal Income Tax, in P5 minus the group insurance in Q5, minus the union dues in R5, minus the 401k plan in S5. That'll give us the 1,950. This would be the actual net check. So in other words, the employee earned 4,062.50 in theory. Again, if we had economic earnings without these withholdings, it might be different, but in theory, they earned 4,062.50 we took out from their check for them to pay on their behalf OASDI, Medicare, Federal Income Tax, Insurance, Union Dues, 401k to get to a net check that they'll actually receive of $1,950.92. Now we're going to calculate the employer earnings because the employer is going to have to pay and match some of this information. So this OASDI, this is only the employee half. The employer is going to, in essence, pay the same uh, amount for their half. So we're just going to take the same calculation. I'll take this number, the OASDI wages, times the 6.2% or 0 0.062 equals the uh, 4062 in K5 times 0 0.062 tab. The HI is going to be the same. We already had it here. We're going to do it again for the employer's half. It's going to equal, I'm going to scroll all the way to that blue column, the, the total pay times uh, 0 0.0145. So same number here. And then we're having the FUTA. This is a purely employer tax. Notice there was no FUTA here. It's only an employer half tax. So we're going to pick up the employer times 0 0.006. So we're going to say this equals, scrolling back to the total wages. Actually, sorry. We're going to go to the FUTA taxes, the uh, 4,062 times 0 0.006. Enter. So if we saw that again, it's going to be, if we set a calculator, we're taking the FUTA wages, which is this... 4062.5 times 0 0.006, 6.6%. 6 and that gives us 2437, 2438 if we round. So that's our 20, 2438. And then the SUTA is going to be our SUTA wages times 0 0.054. So this equals, I'm going to scroll over to the SUTA wages right here in M5 times. 0.054 and that'll give us our SUTA. So this doesn't come out of the paycheck for the employee, but is something that the employer has to pay on behalf or because of payroll taxes. Okay, so you can see that's the calculation. So that's gonna be, that's one pay period. And you can see the complexity, none of the calculations in and of themselves are that complex, but when we put this whole thing together, it can look quite intimidating. So we're gonna do the same thing for the other two here. So we got Cindy Lewis, we're going to say it's married with four as well. Total hours, and this would be given from the W-4. We're going to say that the hours, regular hours, are 158 versus overtime of zero overtime hours. Her pay rate 
which we would get from the agreement when we employed her is the $28. And then if we multiply this out, I'm gonna do this a little bit faster this time. It's gonna be the 158 times the $28 in F6. So this equals the 158 times $28 tab. And then the overtime rate, we're gonna calculate even though she didn't have any overtime because we want to have some symmetric C in our Excel sheets and it should be symmetrical in some way. So we're gonna calculate the rate anyway. So it's gonna be the 28 times time and a half, which is equal to the hourly rate, $28 times time and a half or 100.5, another 50%, giving us 42.5 or 42, 42. And then we're gonna calculate the overtime. Again, it's zero, she didn't work any overtime. But we're gonna we're gonna keep the calculation there so that if we wanted to copy these formulas across it would be easy to do so so i'm just gonna say this equals the zero hours times the 42 dollars in the overtime rate that will give us of course zero so then with the total earnings again you could just say hey it's only the 4426 i don't need to add the zero to it because that doesn't do anything but we want to, for one, note that if I copied this formula down, if we highlight and copy down, which we'll probably do later, it'll do that for us and it'll pick up this cell. So we wanna make sure even if we don't need this cell, we pick it up so that if we copy something down, it's all symmetrical. We're gonna do the calculations straight through rather than copying and pasting formulas for a while at least. So in J6, we're gonna say this equals this 4,424 plus this zero tab. Now we're gonna to get to those wages for OASDI, Social Security, wages for FUTA, Federal Unemployment, wages for SUTA, State Unemployment. They're all the same right now because no one has hit these caps yet, but they will next time. So we have to be in good practice and make sure that we're doing everything so that the system will be the same when these become relevant. So in K5, this just equals this 4,424. In L6, this just equals the same 4,424 for FUTA. In M6, this just equals that same 4,424 for SUTA. Then we'll go to the OASDI calculation, and that's gonna be based on this wages. It's the same, but we wanna make sure to pick up the right column times the Social Security or OASDI rate of six point or six point two percent or point oh six two so this equals the this column in k6 times point oh six two tab i uh, note that uh, this one then is going to be the medicare or and, and that's going to be hi or medicare we're going to pick up the total earnings because there's no cap so we're just going to be in oh six and say this equals point to the four thousand a 424 times 0.0145 and tab then we have the most complicated one the FIT I'm gonna scroll back over this is the federal income tax we have to use the tables because of the progressive tax system we don't have a flat tax it would be nice and easy we need to know the marital status we need to know the number of allowances the pay period which is monthly for us and the amount which is gonna be this 4424 so I'm gonna to go to our tables and we're in the right table, married, monthly. All we need to know is the pay amount, which is 4,424. So 4,430, 4,390 to 4,430. Here it is and four allowances. So here's the four allowances and I lost where I was here, 4,000. 390 4430 is gonna be this 216 that 216 right there so that's gonna be the amount that we're going to withhold that uh, 216 for the FIT so I'm gonna go back to FIT and obviously if, if we had a system the computer would be able to do that lookup table which would be very nice it's very nice to use but it's, it's important to note how complicated that can be for tax planning purposes. It's great when the computer will look it up for you, but still makes problems when uh, we have to tax plan on it. So that's gonna be 216. Group insurance, I'm just gonna give. It's gonna be the 1416.67 that's gonna come out of the paycheck. Uh, and this is, these, are, these are voluntary benefits. 
or that one is union dues we're gonna say she's another union worker we're just gonna add that union worker in there just to note that that would have to be removed and the 401k again i'm gonna give it we're not gonna get into the 401k calculation just note that this is the employer portion that is going into some type of retirement plan like a 401k which is i'm just gonna say 442.40 so these are given and we would have to look those up based on one the union agreement the group insurance agreement and the 401k whatever was decided by the employer and the employee under the terms of the agreement then we got the net pay net pay is just going to be then the calculation of this right there this 4424 our total earnings minus what we withhold social security 274.29 minus medicare 64.16 minus federal income tax 216 minus the group insurance 1416.67 minus the union dues eight dollars minus the 401k 442.4 gives us the 2549 let's see if we did that correctly we're going to do that with a formula here and do the same calculation this time i'm going to pick up this number minus the sum of these numbers and it's a bit nicer of a formula it looks nicer shorter at least this equals this 4,424 in J6 minus the sum. I'm going to double click the sum function and pick up all the deductions. So then we're just picking up the OASDI to the 401k plan. And then we should close it up. Notice I should close the black brackets with shift nine. If I don't do that and I just hit enter, it's okay. It's, it's kind of scary. It says that we messed up somehow. But all it's saying is we found a typo. We're going to close it up for you. And we're going to say, is this what you want? And we're like, yeah, that's what I want. And then we have the 2,249. Then we'll calculate the employer portion. Same calculations, but we're going to match the OASDI, match the uh, Medicare, and then calculate FUTA and SUTA, which are employer-only taxes. So same calculation here in U6 as the employee portion of uh, Social Security, it's going to equal the 424424 in uh, K6 times the 0 0.062 tab. And then for the HI, we're going to pick up the total wages. So this equals, I'm going to scroll to the right just a little. That one is what we should pick up times. I'm going to scroll back over just a little bit. So it's J6 times 0 0.0145. Because if we move the decimal places two foot points over that then futa notice we haven't seen futa over here it's only a, an employer tax we're going to pick up the futa wages this number um, but just make sure it's this column because this one will change for sure next time period times the 0 0.006 or 0.6 percent so this equals the 4424 times 0 0.006 tab so there's uh, futa and then suta is gonna we're gonna pick up the suta wages which has a cap of 8,000 times 0.054 or 5.4 percent so this equals the suta wages times 0.054 enter so that's our 238.90 uh, note these don't affect the net pay but are something that the employer has to pay all right, let's do this two more times. We got the next one is Jill Jackson. We're gonna say that Jill is, is single, one exemption. Her total, her regular uh, earnings are gonna be 170 for the month hours. Overtime hours are gonna be three. And once again, we're just giving those numbers. It would be based on either a 40 hour work week or an eight hour day, typically depending on the state, 40 hours being the regular reg, um, calculation for the Fed which could then include some state um, more stringent calculations. <laughs> so then we're gonna say that her rate is gonna be $31. Then we'll calculate her regular rate. So I'm just gonna take the 170 hours times 31. Note that this three hours might be a little uh, not enough <laughs> depending on, on the hours that were worked in a week, but we're gonna go with that for now because that's our calculation. But remember that we would have to calculate that on a 40 hour work week, break them out into a per week basis and see what was uh, over 40 hours per week typically so we'll multiply this out we're going to say this equals the 170 regular hours times the 31 uh, hourly rate 
and that'll give us the 5,270. Then we'll calculate our time and a half rate, our overtime rate, which will be the 31 regular times time and a half, or 1.5. So this equals the 31 uh, regular rate in E7 times 100.5, 150%. That'll give us the 4650. Then the overtime pay then will be the three hours times the 4650. So in I7 equals the three hours times 4650. So G7 times H7 tab. Then the total earnings are gonna be the regular pay plus the overtime pay. So in J7 equals the regular pay in F7 plus the overtime in uh, I7. And there we have it. So now we're gonna bring this over to calculate our taxes on it. So we have the OASDI, these are gonna be the wages again. So they're all the same this time because no one has hit our caps. So the first one is just gonna be equals, this is OASDI social security wages, not the tax. Then the FI FUTA equals the same amount in J7. And then SUTA equals the same amount. <laughs> and so they're all the same right now. No, no change because no one's hit the cap yet. And then we're going to go to the, the uh, Social Security or OASDI tax, which will be this number, the OSDI wages times 6.2% or 0.062. So in N7, we're going to say this equals the 5,409 times 0.062. And that'll give us our 335.39. HI, we're just going to use the total earnings. So we're going to be in 07 equals 5,409.50 times 0.0145 tab. Then we're going to go to the FIT where we will need our information once again. So we have the single one and the 5,270 for a monthly uh, pay period. So we're currently in monthly, but it's married. So we're going to scroll back up to single all right, so here we are in the singles and we need the 5,409.50. So we're in single 5,000. And we're actually a little bit over. It's at five, at the highest point of the table is uh, 5,405. So it's 5,409. So we're gonna, I'm gonna use the table here because we're gonna use the percentage method next time. So I'm gonna pick up what we have here. So we're kind of, going to use the table on this one and so we're going to pick up the highest number there's one so i believe that's this column as far as the allowances so here's the allowances we're going to pick up this 702 so that's what we're going to use the 702 so we'll scroll back over here and we're going to pick up the fit at 702 Next, we're going to enter the rest of our information here. So we've got the group insurance. I'm going to give this information. It would be the voluntary deduction for the group insurance. And we are going to say that the group insurance is 1,166.67. Uh, the union dues, there are none for this employee, not part of the union. 401k is, we're going to say it's 378.67. That would depend on the elections by the employee and the employer uh, plan that is available. Then we'll calculate the net pay. It's gonna be this number minus the sum of the deduction areas, all the taxes and the deductions. So we're gonna use the same formula. We're gonna type it in here. Note that we could copy this down now, but we wanna practice this calculation. So we're gonna say this equals this number, uh, J7 minus the sum, S-U-M, of all everything in the red here the deductions to the 401k don't worry about a blank cell that's okay and then we should shift nine close it up so j7 minus the sum of brackets n7 colon s7 brackets and enter okay and then we're going to calculate the employer taxes so we're in uh, the employer taxes for social security or oasti in u7 this will equal we're going to point to the OASTI wages times 0.062 tab. 
And then we're in Medicare. We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to say this equals, this time picking up total wages in uh, J7 times, I'm going to scroll back over so we can see the percent, which is 0.0145 or 1.45%. So 0 0.0145 tab. And then FUTA, where we're going to pick up the FUTA wages. This one equals FUTA in L7 times 0 0.06 uh, 006. and if any of these uh, if i'm going too fast the the procedure is the same as the prior one so we probably went a little slower there so uh, if you want to go through that or or actually go through this one a uh, slower slow it down but tab then the suta is going to be the suta wages which will be this item here times the 0 0.054 so this equals scrolling over to suta here in uh, M7, M7 times 0.054, and there's our suta. All right, so there's this one. Now we're gonna do this one more time. Uh, this one for Judy Jones, who we're gonna basically say is the owner. So she's gonna be married. We're gonna have three. This is gonna come from the W4. We're giving it here. No hourly rate. We're gonna say she's a salaried employee. And so that she's not subject, she's exempt from overtime calculations. And we're going to give her a high wage because we want to get over this cap to, sh to see what would be the implications. We won't get over the caps, or some of the caps, at least Social Security. We want to get over this Social Security cap to see what happens when we get to later time periods. So we're going to say that her wages are 35000 a month. So 35000 is, is is her monthly rate here and so we're gonna say that uh, uh the regular pay that i'm sorry i just undid that i deleted that i'm gonna put the 35 we don't need a regular rate we're just gonna say she gets paid salary of thirty-five thousand in the regular pay now there's no gonna be any overtime hours because she's a salaried employee no overtime pay so the total earnings are nice and simple for a salaried employee it's just gonna be the same as or equal to the thirty-five thousand. Now, it is possible for someone to be salaried and still be subject to overtime regulations, but typically the salaried individuals will be higher paid and not subject to overtime calculations. And that's going to be our assumption here. Then we're going to do our same information this on this side. We're going to say the OASDI wages is the same because she didn't hit this cap yet. So this equals the same number. FUTA, however, she completely cleared the 7,000 cap, so we're capping it at 7,000 and that's the most confusing thing you know these caps are kind of confusing so <laughs> she, she capped she got up to 7,000 already so we, we take the lower of the two or 7,000 we could use a formula like an if then formula to um, to logically calculate that in Excel but I won't get into that right now just this is just the logic of payroll maybe we'll do one later so then we've got the 8,000. She hit the 8,000, which is lower than the 35. So we cap it at 8,000. And then the Social Security, we can calculate now based on this 35,000. So Social Security equals the 35,000 times 0 0.062. Medicare equals the 35,000 total earnings times 0 0.0145. Then we have the FIT, Federal Income Tax. Now we're gonna use the other tables to do this because this is gonna be complicated because it's too high for the tables. So I'm gonna go back to, we can't just use the, the married tables because as we saw last time, we should have gone to the percentages because it's too high, our earnings are too high. So we need to go up to the percentage method. So I'm gonna scroll all the way up, probably should use the page up button until we get to the percentage method. I'm going to go through all of these to get back up to the percentage method. And this will be give us an idea of what these tables are actually doing. What are these tables actually calculating? So we're, we're in the percentage method now. And these, this will actually show us the tiers on how this progressive tax system works. So here we've got uh, payroll single uh, for a quarterly. This is semi-annual. We want monthly. So here we got weekly, we got weekly, semi-annual, monthly. So we're monthly, she's married, and three exemptions. 
So that means we're going to use the one on the right hand side. So Merritt, if we read through this, it says uh, if the amount of wages after subtracting withholdings and allowances is not over. So this is like kind of the key term here after subtracting withholdings and allowances. Well, what is that? So in order to do this method, we have to go and find what they give us for the withholding and allowances. So if we scroll up top, we'll see that information given here. So what we're looking is for the percentage method amount for withholding allowances. And we have a, a monthly of the, the 345.80. So the 345.80, she has three uh, allowances that we got from her W4. So we're going to take this 345.8 times three. That's going to give us the 1,037.40. Uh, now her total wages were 35,000. So we're just going to subtract that from 35,000. So I'm just going to say, my, I'm going to get to a negative number, but I'm going to say minus the 35,000. And that'll give us the 33,962.60. Uh, so that's what we're going to, that's going to be like her wages that we're going to use uh, to calculate this. So we subtract out the allowances this way. We took the allowances. 345.80 times the number, I'm going to talk, we took the monthly allowance rate, 345.80 times the number of allowances, three, subtracted it from her wages of 35,000 to get the 33, um, 962.60, 962.60. That's what we're then going to use. So now we're going to go scroll, go back to our tables down here and we'll scroll down to our table. So here's weekly, bi-weekly, semi, and then here's monthly. We want to be on the married side. We're looking for between these brackets here. So uh, we can see that each of these have, has a progressive increasing tax rate, but it's only more tax on the added amount of revenue. So if we go to, we have to find the bracket that we're in, 33,962 um, 33, is between this last one here. So between 30, uh, actually, it's between this one, between the 27 and the 34. So this is the area that we are looking at. So in, in, the way this reads is it basically says, hey, look, we already know uh, at, at the last point, at basically the 27,000, at the end of the last bracket, how much tax will be paid. We can calculate that. That's going to be um, this 5,348.26. What we need to calculate is the amount that falls within this time period because we're not at the next time point. We're not at the 34,296. So whatever is between what our rate is, which is the 33,962, minus the last point that we calculated exactly what the tax is at that period, 27,213, that's the only amount that's going to be taxed at the 32. Our prior income at the highest rate was taxed at 24, 22, 12, and 10. So all those brackets, we don't have to recalculate all those brackets because it's able to calculate it on the table based on this last point in time or the last wage rate, the highest wage rate before the bracket that we are in. It's able to calculate that. That's 5,348. So in essence, the calculation then would be this, or it will be this, not really in essence. So we're just going to say that it's going to be our 33,962.6 minus this 27, 27213, that gives us 6,749.60. That's what's going to be taxed at the highest rate of, of 32%. So that's times 0.32. That gives us our 2,159.87 about. And then we're going to add to it this 5,348.26. So plus this 5,348.26, that'll give us our... 7508.13 and that's what we're going to use so if we scroll back over or if we go back over to our tables we're going to go to the fit and we can try to do that uh one more time in the calculations here right we're going to say it was the fit is going to be the 30 th or we can even take it's going to be equal to this 35,000 minus the exemptions which were uh, 345.8 times three. And then I'm gonna take this whole thing, I'm gonna bracket this whole thing. I know this is kind of a complex formula to look like this, but 
I'm gonna bracket whatever that comes out to. I'm gonna bracket that whole thing. And at this point, it should come out to 33,962 if we were to do it. We're gonna take that and subtract it uh, minus the amount from our table, which is going to be this uh, 27, 27213. So we're gonna take our 27213 and multiply it times the highest rate, which is 32%. So the 32%. So if we go back over here, we're gonna say that's minus the 27213. So this is kind of like our wages, the side minus the low point in the brackets. And then I'm gonna put brackets again around the entire thing, because now I wanna take this entire thing, whatever that comes out to, times the highest rate of 0.32. And then we're gonna, we're gonna take that and then we're gonna add to it plus, if we go back to our table, the 5,000, uh, 5,348.26. So we're gonna add to that plus the 5348.26 and that's gonna be our entire thing and enter. So that gives us our 7,508.13. I know that's a complex formula, so you don't have to do it that way. It's easier to do basically in a calculator or in an Excel sheet vertically so we can see subtotals. But uh, if you wanna practice that formula, you can. This is one area where if you don't wanna use the formula, then that's, that's fine right there. The FIT is where we've been hard coding this whole thing because of the complexities there. So then group insurance, we're going to say that the group insurance is going to be the group insurance 1,500. Union dues, none. 401k plan uh, is going to be for her 1,750. Net pay then, we're gonna calculate the total earnings minus all the withholdings and deductions equals the net pay 35 minus the sum of all the deductions so we're going to take uh, n8 to uh, the s8 and enter and yes that's what we want so there it is now we're going to take the oasdi the employer taxes so this is going to equal the employer wages 35,000 times 0.062 tab medicare we're going to say equals and we're going to pick up this amount in J8 times 0.0145. And then FUTA, we're going to pick up the 7,000 equals. There's a big difference here, of course, 7,000 rather than the 35 times 0.006, the FUTA rate, tab. And then SUTA equals the SUTA times the 0.054 and enter. So there we have it and it sums it all up for us and that's gonna be uh, our information there.